One day, as the crowds were gathering, Jesus went up the mountainside with his disciples and sat down to teach them. This is what he taught them. God blesses those who realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is given to them. God blesses those who mourn. God blesses those who mourn because they realize their need for God. Because they want God. For they will be comforted. God blesses those who are gentle and lowly. Those who are humble. For the whole earth will belong to them. God blesses those who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, for justice, for they will receive it in full. They will be filled. God blesses those who show mercy, for those are the ones that will receive mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted, whether it's in the natural or spiritually or in the thought life, the emotions, in the heart, God blesses those who are persecuted because they live for God, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when you are mocked and persecuted and lied about because you are my followers, because you are followers of Jesus the Christ. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted too. Those that spoke for God in the past were persecuted too. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it useful again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain, glowing in the night for all to see. Don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand why I, Jesus the Christ, have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. I did not come to do away with the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets? No, I came to fulfill them. I came to do them. I assure you, until heaven and earth disappear, even the smallest detail of God's law will remain until its purpose is achieved. So if you break the smallest commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless you obey God, better than the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees do, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven at all. 
you have heard that the law of Moses says, do not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the high council. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are standing in front of the altar in the temple, offering a sacrifice to God, and you suddenly remember someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there beside the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Come to terms quickly with your enemy before it is too late and you are dragged into court, handed over to an officer and thrown in jail. I assure you that you won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that the law of Moses says, do not commit adultery, do not have sex outside of marriage. But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman, anyone who even looks at a person with lust in their eye has already committed adultery with that person in their heart. So, if your eye, even if it is your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away, it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even if it is your stronger hand, if it causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. You have heard that the law of Moses says, a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a letter of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife unless she has been unfaithful causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that the law of Moses says, do not break your vows. You must carry out your vows you have made to the Lord. But I say, don't make any vows. If you say, by heaven, it is a sacred vow because it is God's throne. And if you say, by the earth, it is a sacred vow because the earth is God's footstool. And don't swear by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Don't even swear by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Your word is enough to strengthen your promise with a vow shows that something is wrong. You have heard that the law of Moses says, if an eye is injured, injure the eye of the person who did it. If a tooth gets knocked out, knock out the tooth of the person who did it. But I say, don't resist an evil person. If you are slapped on the right cheek, turn the other to. If you are ordered to court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat to. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask, and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You have heard that the law of Moses says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil people and the good people. And he sends rain 
on the just people and on the unjust people. If you love only those who love you, what good is that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are only kind to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven, God, is perfect. Take care. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired, because then you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give a gift to someone, don't shout about it like the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and in the streets so that they call attention to their acts, to their good deeds of charity. I assure you, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in secret, in private, and your father who knows all secrets and what is done in private will reward you openly. And now about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I assure you that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father secretly in private. Then your father, who knows all secrets and what's done in private, what's said in private, will reward you openly. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered only by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them because your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Pray like this, our father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us our food for today and forgive us for our sins just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us and don't let us yield to temptation but deliver us from the evil one if you forgive those who sin against you your heavenly father will forgive you but if you refuse to forgive others your father will not forgive your sins and when you fast don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do who try to look pale and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I assure you, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will suspect you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in secret and your father who knows all secrets will reward you. Don't store up treasure here on earth where they can be eaten by moths, where they get rusty and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where they will never become moth eaten or rusty and where they will be safe from thieves. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart and thoughts will also be. Your eye is a lamp for your body. A pure eye lets sun shine into your soul, but an evil eye shuts out the light and plunges you into darkness. 
If the light you think you have is really darkness, how deep that darkness will be. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So I tell you, don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food, drink, and clothes. Doesn't life consist of more than food and clothing? Look at the birds. They don't need to plant or harvest or put food in barns because your heavenly father feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than they are. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Of course not. And why worry about your clothes? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't he more surely care for you? You have so little faith. So don't worry about having enough food or drink or clothing. Why be like the pagans who are so deeply concerned about these things? Your heavenly father already knows all your needs and he will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Stop judging others, mistreating others, and you will not be judged, mistreated. For others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log from your own eye. Then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't give what is holy to unholy people. Don't give pearls to swine. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Keep on asking, and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking, and you will find Keep on knocking and the door will be open for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And the door is open to everyone who knocks. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father God give good gifts to those who ask him? Do for others what you would like them to do for you. This is a summary of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose the easy way. But the gateway to life is small and the road is narrow and only a few ever find it. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really wolves that will tear you apart. You can detect them by the way they act. Just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, you don't pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. 
A healthy tree produces good fruit, and an unhealthy tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, the way to identify a tree or a person is by the kind of fruit that is produced, by what comes from them, by what they say and do. Not all people who sound religious are really godly. They may refer to me as Lord, but they still won't enter the kingdom of heaven. The decisive issue is whether they obey my Father God in heaven. On judgment day, many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Go away. The things you did were unlawful, unauthorized. Anyone who listens to my teaching and obeys me is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on rock. But anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will fall with a mighty crash. After Jesus finished speaking, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught as one who had real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. At another time, Jesus began to teach. He said, don't be troubled. You trust God. Now trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's home, and I am going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, I would tell you plainly, when everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know where I am going and how to get there. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We haven't any idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had known who I am, then you would have known who my Father is. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Philip, don't you even yet know who I am? Even after all the time I have been with you, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking to see him? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say are not my own. But my father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the father and the father is in me. Or at least believe because of what you have seen me do. The truth is anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. And even greater works because I am going to be with the father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it because the work of the Son brings glory to the Father. Yes, ask anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit 
who leads into all truth. The world at large cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you do because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you like orphans. I will come to you in just a little while. The world will not see me again, but you will. For I will live again, and you will too. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and I am in you. Those who obey my commandments are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them. And I will reveal myself to each one of them. Judas not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that same name. He said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, all those who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come to them and live with them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not do what I say. And remember, my words are not my own. This message is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Counselor as my representative, and by the Counselor I mean the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I myself have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you, I am going away, but I will come back to you again if you really love me. You will be very happy for me because now I can go to the Father who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen so that you will believe when they happen. I don't have much more time to talk to you because the prince of this world approaches. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so that they will produce even more fruit. You have already been pruned for greater fruitfulness by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful apart from me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who parts from me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you stay joined to me and my words remain in you, you may ask any request you like and it will be granted. My true disciples produce much fruit. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I command you to love each other in the same way that I love you. 
And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friends. You are my friends if you obey me. I no longer call you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. I command you to love each other. When the world hates you, remember, it hated me before it hated you. The world would love you if you belonged to it, but you don't. I chose you to come out of the world, and so it hates you. Do you remember when I told you a servant is not greater than the master? Since they persecuted me, naturally, they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. The people of the world will hate you because you belong to me, for they do not know God who sent me. They would not be guilty if they have not heard me speak to them, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Anyone who hates me hates my father too. If I hadn't done such miraculous signs among them that no one else could do, they would not be counted guilty, but as it is, they saw all that I did and yet hated both of us, me and my father. This has fulfilled what the scripture said. They hated me without cause. But I will send you the counselor, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the father and will tell you all about me. And you must also tell others about me because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you these things so that you won't fall away, for you will be expelled from the synagogues. And the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing God a service. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I am telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember I warned you. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and none of you has asked me where I am going. Instead, you are very sad, but it is actually best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the counselor won't come. If I do go away, he will come, because I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convince the world of its sin and of God's righteousness, and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is unbelief in me, Jesus the Christ. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the prince of this world has already been judged. Oh, there's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not be presenting his own ideas. He will be telling you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by revealing to you whatever he receives from me. All that the Father has is mine. This is what I mean when I say that the Spirit will reveal to you whatever he receives from me. In just a little while, I will be gone, and you won't see me anymore. And then just a little while after that, you will see me again. The disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, you won't see me, and then you will see me? What does he mean when he says, I'm going to the Father? 
does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him. So he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said in just a little while, I will be gone. And you won't see me anymore. Then just a little while after that, you will see me again. Truly, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me. But the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy when you see me again. It will be like a woman experiencing the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives place to joy because she has brought a new person into the world. You have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. The truth is you can go directly to the Father and ask him, and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have an abundance of joy. I have spoken of these matters in parables. But the time will come when this will not be necessary. And I will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me. And believe that I came from God. Yes. I came from the Father into the world, and I will leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, at last you are speaking plainly and not in parables. Now we understand that you know everything, and you don't need anyone to tell you anything. From this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus asked, do you finally believe? But the time is coming. In fact, it is already here when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet, I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone in all the earth. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by doing everything you told me to do. And now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have told these men about you. They were in the world, but then you gave them to me. Actually, they were always yours. And you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the words you gave me, and they accepted them, and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. And all of them, since they are mine, belong to you. And you have given them back to me, so they are my glory. Now I am departing the world. I am leaving them behind and coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them and care for them, all those you have given me, so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I have kept them safe. I guarded them so that not one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scriptures foretold. And now I am coming to you. 
I have told them many things while I was with them so that they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word. And the world hates them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They are not part of this world any more than I am. Make them pure and holy by teaching them your words of truth. As you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself entirely to you so that they also might be entirely yours. I am not praying only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me because of their testimony. My prayer for all of them is that they will be one, just as you and I are one, Father. That just as you are in me and I am in you, so they will be in us. And the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are and I in them and you in me all being perfected into one. Then the world will know that you sent me and will understand that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you've given me to be with me so they can see my glory. You gave me the glory because you loved me even before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. And I have revealed you to them and will keep on revealing you. I will do this so that your love for me may be in them and I in them.